citizens of the world. I'm here to change your life. Anything you want. Anything you dream of, you can have it. Get used to it. I've never been one for rules. The answer is always more. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Spinner Rack. I'm here with my boy Petey. Say what's up to the crowd, Petey. What's up, crowd? <laughs> Yo, so listen, today we're gonna to be talking about once again Wonder Woman. We, there's some more controversies that's come up, and we've done some evaluations on something on, on this particular movie, and we just want to go back and just clarify and probably point out certain things that we um, looked at and what we thought about it. So here, Petey, I'm gonna knock this bad boy to you, cricket style. Bah! Oh, What's your thoughts on okay, this? Um, <laughs> ultimately, I'm going to, let's go to the, the sophomore jinx. Let's just say this movie is a solid sophomore jinx. It's a Thor 2 um, sort of thing. I mean, people like Superman 2 when it first came out. What the, what the, what the second? Iron Man 2 people don't like. Um, a lot of the sophomore movies kind of Maybe Amazing Spider-Man 2, that sort of thing. So there's a lot of um, sophomore movies that have been kind of Avengers 2. And let's put it this. I can't, I'm not going to try to fight anyone on the dislikes and likes and that sort of thing. Because a lot of times, and we looked at the Red Letter Media video, and they talked about um, a lot of things before they got to the thing. They talked about Kevin Feige. They talked about the comparison, the Marvel movie, all this other stuff. And I'm like... When are they going to get to Wonder Woman? So let's just be honest. With Wonder Woman, the issue people have is that the wish fulfillment arc is not a movie that they were interested in watching, right? So they hear wishes and they're like, nah. And then that made everything fall apart for everyone. Because that's the only thing I can say, because it's a simple story. But if you don't like the wishes, then maybe that's why people are like, you know what? This wish thing is kind of iffy. That's not that's not Thanos. That's not um, whatever you think is the best sort of um, superhero plot. I don't know what in Aquaman we could go to, but um, you know, it's like I think that's what the kind of thing. But I was thinking about it, and your point, you, you know, Mars, you had some uh, some strong points you wanted to say. We were just talking about. Can you go into your side of it? Because that's what I think. I think that part kind of threw audiences off and then it gets to being very nitpicky talking about the open and this that and the other there is some stuff we can talk about and some ideas in this time frame that took so long for it to come out maybe in my opinion i think some things were changed because there were some things we talked about in our early things about the trailers that didn't come out in the in the story and it, i think it'll key into what people are thinking but can you go into some of the things you were thinking about so, so one thing I just want to bring—I was wanting to bring this up when we were discussing, but you know, the whole wish fulfillment that I thought that they did—I and I don't know if I mentioned this in my previous video—is that I was watching Aladdin, and if that is the biggest wish fulfillment movie. That, that the analogy between Aladdin and this is so apt because at the very end where you have—I'm sorry, this is going to be a spoiler, guys—but the very end where he wishes to to basically have the ability to do wishes, it's not even the very end, the middle, and whereas Jafar. The, the evil character, the bad character does the same thing where he becomes the, 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 the genie. Of course, that's a trick where he's captured. He's all powerful. And so is, um, and so is um, our character, Maxwell Lord in the show. It's, it, to me, it seems to have been done better in the, in the Disney film than it was here. You know, no, I mean, can't fight you on it with the Disney <laughs> versus Warner Brothers because it, if it, it's a big movie. That's so, the one with Will. Is that the, the more recent one with Will Smith? Is that one? Yes, yeah, definitely in the Will Smith one. But I just thought it was just a better, it was done better. It's not that okay. I'm knocking this movie. I told you I liked the movie originally. It's just a B for me. It's not a, a spectacular A. It's not like ground shaking. 
It's just she was she played it by the numbers, but she did certain things like you said before, the whole wish fulfillment. I didn't think of it like that in terms of the wish fulfillment. My thing was like, yo, what's the name became a genie? <laughs> you know, this is the same thing this guy, but you don't get all the powers. He didn't get to go do crazy and people weren't able to bring him back. And um, so I mean that's one of the the the, the issues I thought that, you know, audiences, I don't think I don't know if audiences picked up on that, but I just felt that when it was done with with the Aladdin, it was just done much better was funnier was nice it was a different type of movie though you know and probably the adult audiences were like this is not this is like you just said before probably this is not what's good for the superhero this is not the type of movie that i expected with superhero genre yeah. and then you have what you um i think you mentioned this earlier i don't know if you're here but the whole beginning the whole beginning of the film where you see the amazons and they're going through this and and diana is is, is doing is struggling to find the truth and you know do the right thing and stuff like that yes that definitely goes through the movie but everybody saw this spectacular scene of them doing stuff. And you're like, oh, wow, the Amazons. And they only were using the opening scenes. And you're like, ah, you know, come on. It's like having the Wakandans and Black Panther. You see this whole thing and then there's nothing. Well, that's that's one of the things. I want to go to one of the things that could have been an inspiration for the Amazon scene. Because it's definitely for the armor. The armor... It draws from, let's see, can I get to this thing? Where is this? Why does this always happen? So what point were you saying? There's another point you said that I made that you thought was interesting. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I wanted to go to this first, okay. like that opening, like basically having Wonder Woman in armor is kind of like um, Perez's Challenge of the Gods. Whereas the character, there was a character who was a a human woman who went through the Bermuda Triangle um, and was sort of lost, but she became one of the greatest heroes of the Amazons and her name was Diana. And that's who Diana was named after. And she had this armor and this is how they had the gun. So when they practiced the bullets of breakless, there's a whole thing set up in this. So that ultimately should have, might've been better than doing the triathlon, doing this war where they had the character that's ultimately revealed in the um, in the end credit scenes. So they could have tied in this armor into this sort of thing, but that would have still been too much story, but it would have gave you at least something for this armor that she has on. This is not the same exact armor because they used the Alex, um, Ross. Alex Ross armor. This is a, a, a trademark Perez body and gorgeous that only Perez could draw armor. That's, uh, that's beautiful, but it's not something that a lot of artists and maybe hard to even translate, so. They did um, it in the first movie. They did it with the sword and the shield, remember? They had the sword and shield. That was, that was a, um, they did use the, the skirt, but the top part is the redesign that Byrne did on Hippolyta that had the shield. The shield, obviously Perez had already done that, but the sword had Wonder Woman with a sword with Hippolyta and that sort of thing, so. Oh, I just wanted to go to that first. And um, ultimately, one of the things that you also have to think about is everyone has gone at um, the, um, the Maxwell Lord character, trying to connect it to um, the Gordon Gecko and trying to get it to Trump. Because they look at the hair and they're like, oh, look at the hair, the hair and this, that, and the other. And one of the things I was thinking of with all that time, Possibly they probably wanted to, in my opinion, this is all opinion, that they wanted to divorce Wonder Woman 84 from, uh, what's that thing? They wanted to divorce it from the whole Justice League. Because when we first saw the movie, I want to go to some, these a couple other stills for a second from comic books. Now this is from the Forever People. Now you see this scene here where all these people controlled this is a Kirby book from Forever People. And you see these people that anti-life is controlling these people. This anti-life is something that's, which would be throwing in, them into the heavy Kirby concept, but it would tie into Justice League and that. But who do we got? The next character that we see is the character that we first said we thought we were gonna see in this movie, which was G. Gordon Godfrey, which I guess his name is sort of based off of G. Gordon and uh, Liddy that sort of thing, like Kirby was heavy into Nixon, heavy into like this, like the World War II, stuff like that, like the stuff that he had, had lived in and experienced. But you see this character with the orange hair, Gordon Godfrey 
is that's what we thought we were going to get. We thought we were going to get this that thing, and it was a connection to Dark Side, which would connect to the rest of the movie, would connect to the, the whole series. But it seems like it was divorced from that, and they just came up with this old tycoon, called it a day. But that's what I was originally like, oh, and the storyline that they're kind of borrowing from is not this Kirby one, but which would be Legends, where he goes and attacks the heroes. He makes the heroes look bad. The humans are all going against it. They had the unrest of people going crazy. And you'll see in this next page of Gordon Godfrey, you see the unrest behind him, him complaining about the superheroes. But there's no other superheroes in 1984. There's only Wonder Woman, so they kind of feels like they might have been stuck with storylines that they couldn't use. So they kind of chucked a lot of stuff to get to um, Wonder Woman. But you see sort of the symbolism that I've just showed you in these things of some of the stuff you see in the movie, but for a totally different at intent. And if oh. you look at the hair, this is what they were going after with their Maxwell Lord. That's why whenever anyone said Maxwell Lord, I was like, why isn't it Gordon Godfrey? He looks like Gordon Godfrey. So it feels like they kind of divorced it from that, went with the wish thing, and it's kind of blown up in their face now. Sorry to say. And I'm saying I was okay with it. I was okay with the arc that Wonder Woman had. People say there's no arc. It is a simple arc. But anyway. So, well, yeah. That's mm -hmm. what you're saying in terms of the, the, the confusion. A lot of people are saying this is really more anti-Trump. Yes. I never, I never got that when I watched the trailer. I thought, oh, this is a, an evangelist. This is Gordon Godfrey. And then I also pointed out a burn book that had an evangelist and it was a female with a character who, that I would reveal the whole story that the other dark character was in it. But the hair really felt like the Kirby character. And I was like, oh, they're doing, they're doing that. So then when they, you hear them say Mayan, there was no other thing with the Mayan just to say it's not dark side. They like, it's Mayan. It's like, because they didn't deal with anything with the Mayan gods and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I mean, well, the two things. One, the Trump thing, I saw it right away and I'm like, whoa, why would they do that? But, you know, I just dismissed it as just, you know, them being doing political. You know, I didn't see the Gordon Godfrey, that, I mean, the, 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 the Max Lord Lord version with that type of hair before. That's Gordon Godfrey. Sorry about that. But, um, I, I didn't understand. I didn't think it was, a, it, it wasn't a huge attract, a, a distraction to the movie, but probably some people felt it and said, hey, you know what? I don't really like the fact that they're trying to stick it to him or whatever. So, mm -hmm. you know, his supporters, who know? But I didn't think it was a big deal. But in terms of the mind, I mean, one of the big, one of the things I thought was left unresolved was that when you had this movie, and, and again, I can only speculate because when they make movies, they do, you know, this an hour and a half movie, they make three hours worth of real. They yeah. shoot and they have editorial decisions that are made at the end. So it could have been, there could be more in there. There could be less in there. You know, there are certain things that they don't really explain. Like I keep going with the son and the wife. I thought they should have had the girlfriend or whatever. But in terms of the Mayan, I thought that it was, I see an opportunity to bring in another pantheon of gods into the DC universe. Another pantheon with powers that you would fight. I don't know if they felt, well, hey, that would be something that wouldn't be right knocking out a bad Mayan god, but hey, he's bad. So it doesn't matter. Or um, you know, it's too similar to the, um, the the first movie where, you know, we had Ares doing all these things and he was hiding behind and all of a sudden he pops out. I think if he, people want, the reason people come to see him is the same way they come to see Thor. They want to see a God fight, God level fight, God's um, battling and doing different things, you know? That's what you well, want. I, well, I've seen, I hear you're right and they want more action. Why were people flipped out that Wonder Woman fought Cheetah and saying it's a cat fight. That's anti-feminism. Women fighting. It's like they kind of fight women at some point. They can't always just beat up three million men and then say they're feminists because they're not fighting women. It's like I can't, I can't big bad. It, they just made the big bad a woman. Well, not the big bad. They made one of the baddies a woman. So I mean, I, I think you're right. They're, they're just talking much here. But I just think that they lost the opportunity to. From the beginning, of the people going like, yo, that trailer with the girl running and jumping. And you find out it's nothing but the rest of the show. It doesn't, it just, all it informs is that, oh, well, you know what? You have to, you can't be selfish. You have to do things that are right. And even that point, I don't think was made as clear as it, cut, it could be. Because, you know, with the modern audiences, you got to repeat it. You got to knock them on the head so they don't see it. It can't be too subtle for a superhero movie. How big budgets, you know, if you're doing, um, 
if you're doing a movie that you want to go for the Oscars or something like that, that's a different story. You know, then you could be subtle and, you know, the talk and the, the language and the voice. Yes. But here, superhero movies, you got to pound it on people. You know, you're supposed you to feel this way. People, you look this way. can't huh? do a simple love story. We had to pound it in the paint, put some money. Because yeah. even the Red Letter Media guys were like, and that's what I'm saying. They were in there like they're doing story, right? And yeah, they're, they're right in the thing where they say, oh, how did they find um, Max Lord? They found him when they were on the same road. And <laughs> so I was like, that's really good. That I get it. That makes sense. But they didn't like the rest of the action. They're like, oh, the running was bad. No, the, breath, the thing of her being weak and fighting and that sort of thing, the running is, you can say, oh, that was off. But the, all the other stuff was cool because it's like, is she going to die in this thing? Like she seems a lot weaker, and then we find out. Oh, that's a part of the story. So, yeah. ultimately, that's one thing I wanted to. Uh -oh. Right, but the, remember the VX, the, the 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 that running was supposed to be like the Superman running, and the same thing goes with the. Don't uh, be right back. Keep going. I'm the Superman running, and the same thing goes with some of the effects, you know, because they wanted to do a Superman like. Uh, it's not a shot for shot. I know I said that before, but where they wanted to give like uh, a reference to Superman because Seth, Superman was very involved. She she definitely took some of the points from Superman, the original Superman movie, and you know you can see that. You know I don't think that she did that on like oh let's let's, let's run campy. I think she she said let's. I like the way they ran campy Lee in, in. Hello. Yeah, I'm right here. Okay, it's froze. It's froze. They, you like yeah. they said that how she, they liked how she they ran. The problem is they yeah. shot it wrong. They shot it wrong, and it looked terrible. I, have, I think I think that's the, if you look at the Superman. I think the Superman when he's running, that's how it looked. And so, yeah, but they should they they showed you they had the close up on him, so they had a cool effect happening that he's so in, so moving so fast. His it looked like his feet was almost gliding. Perfect, perfect. Then next thing you know. When they have it, the train is going okay. at the same time. So you're like, you're concentrating on a couple of things. And then when he does the jump, it's yeah. just like, you're sitting up there and it's like, this is, and this is, because everyone runs and thinks they're fast so they'd be as fast as Superman. And it's like, it didn't matter that it was funky. It mattered that how they shot it. Because the first thing is like, he's doing this thing. And then it's just like the train, the faster than locomotive, and the the wahoo, <laughs> and that it was like so. It's like all those elements made the scene work. Not saying, hey, you know, he's kind of they got him on ropes and he's doing this and it's slowed down and all this other stuff. It's that sort of filmmaking that made it work. They didn't. They just said, hey, we got that effect. But the whole thing is like you have to have a payoff to kind of be like. To try to do something like that, and that's one of the thing that um, I think the Donna film kind of gave you, trying to give us something that no one has ever tried to do anything like that. I mean, as far as um, doing something that was like, let's try to do something and make it like we, I, I don't know. It's just it, it's still it's a scene that still always works for me, whether or not like at the end where you see him walking up the the road. I don't know. I said it still sort of works for me, but anyway. But people go into that stuff and say, Lincoln, stop it. Stop. I don't even know why I helped them. So I want to go to one other thing that um, the ending, right? Because the ending people complain about. But this is an eye opener. Now we look at Aries, right? This is similar to one of the beautiful. Yes. So they tried to capture that on film, and I don't think it worked as well because they made this into this realm. Because we know Wonder Woman's in this other realm with Ares and fighting. But one of the things that um, happened was just like in in uh, Wonder Woman 80, 84, she used her lasso, and maybe this would be the if it was a mind god or a dark side using it sort of channeling through him to get the truth out. So maybe they it was another visual that they should have tried to do to make that scene pay off because this everyone likes Wonder um, Presses Wonder Woman and this is the same sort of thing it's just reverse so hold on guy so I'm saying I just wanted to point that out like look at how how visual that is yeah. and ultimately I don't know if the audience would have bought into it in the first Wonder Woman movie. If this was how Wonder Woman, because they played out the whole God killer thing, that sort of thing. And that was the, the least 
um, elements that I didn't like that much. So well, she didn't want to do it. She said the studio made her do it. So probably if she would have wanted. To, so this film is a reaction to that. It looks like where she said she didn't want to do that scene. The studio made her put it in, and now the the film made over a billion dollars. And they're like, okay, well we don't want to do it again. You we give you the the, the chance to do it. And so she did it the way she wanted to do it. I mean, it's just it's just you got to play sometimes by the number. Yeah. With that. I just thought that the opportunity to have, like, if, for example, just if, if I'm saying, that, you know, we do everything, you, you do everything else. There's some problems with some of the other stuff. But at the very end, you do the Maxwell, Maxwell Lord, right? But whereas the world is going to come in chaos, it's going to give the, the new, that Mayan God, the power to emerge. You know, he's been, he's emerging. Right. Similar arc, a similar story to what happened with Ares. Ares is trying to cause the world so he can get, you don't put a title on somebody like that and then use it for one one issue. You know what I'm trying to say? She's got to be the God killer. She's the one who, and that's where I think that is. You don't put the title God, and then that's the only God she ever kills or goes after. She has to be the God killer. Where hey, another God acts out of turn, and you put those suckers down, baby. You know, I think, I think I think that that's why I was going on my thread of hypothesizing that. They originally planned on having Dark Side the connection and having Godfrey and all this stuff. And he'd be Max oh Lord, but he's actually this thing. And then you would reveal God Dark Side. You can't kill God, Dark Side, but you can have a moment where you do the Perez ending and you're like, hey, the truth is channeled back through what Dark Side's doing, that sort of thing. Or use one of the other new gods, but then you have that connection to the other movies. You can, um, you'd have to figure, you really have to figure out that armor thing because it's like, it wasn't strong enough. And I also originally, I also found out, I mean, lastly, because we've talked about the flying and everyone has had a very strong reaction against the flying and saying how it is counterproductive to, you know, Wonder Woman and that sort of thing and the Wonder Woman's powers. But um, I wanted to go to something I found online. We saw Wonder Woman fly in the comics. We've seen her fly in the animated show. What is the problem with these guys? You the problem is, is that people forgot that Wonder Woman flies in um, in the Invisible Jet. Before, no, like the Invisible Jet. People, because of the, the TV show, everyone knows the TV show. They're like, oh, she needs a, she needs a um, Invisible Jet. She's invisible jet to fly. But I have, let me show you a couple things. One and two. All right. So I'm gonna go to this. So ultimately they were giving you the, the stuff we've seen in the comic books. But here's, because um, it was, I think it was um, Don Heck, the artist who, who not created, but he did a long run on the pre-crisis Wonder Woman. Here's the scene where she doesn't have the, Steve has her invisible plane. So she has to fly on her own power. And this is her clearly flying. She comes out that window and she's flying up here. And then you have her, sometimes she would leave the invisible jet and fly. But everybody, even creators had forgotten that Wonder Woman was able to fly in the, um, in the pre, in the pre um, crisis world. So that's one of the things that they were trying to do. I just don't think they just did a good job of it. So well, I, I think, think are, hmm? I think I think you're right. I think that the, this goes back. It just shows you the strength of the um, of the TV show Wonder Woman that that became the imprint where a lot of people are like, oh, I didn't know she can run. So if they didn't see the comic, they didn't see the cartoon, the the animated shows, they don't see it. You know, so it's a it's a big hole. And possibly what you needed there was a little explanation and why she hadn't. But then you also have the problem with the with the with the movie that the Snyder movie, um, Justice League, well, the the Whedon Justice, the Whedon Snyder movie, Justice League, where she doesn't fly. Yeah. And you're like, what? How do you explain that? And that's and sometimes that's what you need to 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 inform. Oh, she can fly, you know, or one of the powers as a god, gods fly, you know. But then why do you use? Because you're with other people, you know. what I'm trying to say you're with other people and you're going somewhere. And you have to do that. Yeah. So I, I think it's just a simple question that and, and Don Hex art, of course, spectacular. Always okay. like there's always been some issues for me with some of the coloring sometimes. Yeah. But I mean that's 197, um, the older, the older stuff. That's 19, was eight. 
Yeah. That stuff was in the 80s that he did. But he was, I mean, that's the thing. They had some great artists and the shots, I was looking through it. Oh, the earliest stuff when, after the classic, the oldest stuff, which was very basic sort of art, when it got Ross Andrew doing it, she would fly to the plane up that was already up in the sky, but it'd be the least dramatic shot ever. Like it'd just be a small panel here and the next you know she's up in the air and it's just like, no, no, we need the shot. But they, you know, these guys are pure storytellers. They're like, no, the story that has nothing to do with her flying right now. It's her, she just needs to get to the plane. So that sort of stuff. So I have a question for you, Pete. Was she in the invisible jet prior to the move to the TV show? Yes, yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't recall. That's before my before yeah, uh, I was reading. She was in the, the she was in that, but it just there was just brief points where she could fly and Perez really stamped it that she travels around and she flies. And I think I think what was it Byrne later just gave her back a jet to use because a uh, Hippolyta at some point was the golden age Wonder Woman. So she had the plane because she couldn't fly. So they kind of, they kind of, you know, like um, split the difference on it. So ultimately, I mean, I just wanted to go through, cause I mean, I get that a lot of people disliked it and they, since the premise oh, is weak. No, no, no. I totally disagree that a lot of people disliked it. We had this, uh, and, and this is the point I was making before. I think that sometimes these films, this is a decent film. If you want to watch it, you can watch it. I don't think it's that bad of a film. You know, I've seen other films and I give the the, the point of um, the Rotten Tomato scores for Ant-Man and the Watch, which I thought was a terrible film. You know, yeah. I hate to knock the, the, the director and stuff like that, but to me, that just was not that great. And yet that had a, 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 a when you look at the Rotten Tomato scores, ridiculous. You So just as a baseline, let me just go back to the Wonder Woman uh, movie. The Wonder Woman Rotten Tomato scores is um, is is the sixty percent on the tomato matter. There's three hundred and fifty five um, critics and seventy four percent audience score, and there are twenty three hundred people who reviewed it. Right, but when you go to the Ant Man and the Wasp, and that made a billion dollars. Ant Man and the Wasp did not make a billion dollars. Ant Man and the Wasp has an eighty seven percent tomato um, um, score, tomato meter, and with four hundred and thirty one critics. I mean. That much better than uh, um, than 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 the um, Wonder than the Wonder Woman eighty four sixty. There's sixty. That's twenty seven percent better. I mean, that's three times the amount. That's nuts. And then you're talking about, but the audience score, the, the audience score is larger for Ant Man and Watch because it's been out longer. So it's twenty four thousand seven seven hundred, right? While the audience score and there's a seventy five percent. Wonder Woman is a seventy four percent with an audience score of twenty three hundred. So yeah. It's a big difference in the number of people who are reviewed, but if we just talk on averages, the average of 74% for both of them is kind of interesting and it kind of holds up. I think the whole problem is that the, yeah. the, um, the, the, the critics are just lambasting it for so much stuff, that they, but they want to give Ant-Man and Wasp all that high praise. I don't know. And to me, it just, it just doesn't make any sense. It's not that bad compared to Ant-Man and the Wasp. I, well, I was going to walk out, I think, I was practically going to walk out that theater. That's how bad it was. And this is like not even two thirds of the way. I said, this is just ridiculous. And, and the end of the film was just, I'm like, this is, it's horrible. And yet they got greenlit for another film. They didn't make a billion dollars. Um, I wonder Woman made a billion dollars and this film is not that bad. There are some issues, you know, um, but can I sit down and enjoy it? Yes. I may be able to watch it a second time. Ant Man and Watch is unwatchable a second time at all. You know, only unless you are, you know, I like, I love um, 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 Rudd, Paul Rudd. I think he's fantastic. He does a great job. You know, Evangeline, she does a decent job in the film. But does the, the story itself is just so problematic. The use of, yeah, just talking about it drives me nuts. That's the thing. People don't, people don't look at, all right, let's go. The, the, the part that they had to make these deal with these, with these criminals and when the criminals go against the deal, they just beat the hell out of them. Like you're right. dealing with criminals. If the deal goes bad, as a hero, you should just leave. No, no, you're not going to go along with the deal. I'm going to beat it out of you and take this out. Like it's a it's a gangster move, and people don't like. No, no, it's Marvel movie. We're going to move past it. So it's one of those things which was hard to do because they also had the the connection to the what's that thing, the Civil War. They kept trying to bring that up. And I think that really held the movie down because I don't, I was like, they, why would they just, this has been so long ago. We got to remember that this is before the blip or whatever it was called in the snap. 
end that the civil war stuff is like i don't want to hear anything more about civil war i don't care like why did get over we want them to have fun like this is a, that's what i said they say it's a brighter than the first but they spend the first part of the movie complaining about um you know complaining about um scott lang they like scott lang you stole the, the outfit and like we don't even remember nobody remembers any of that so it's one of those times i mean i did like the ghost effects but i thought we shouldn't be seeing that with the vision. Like that's what vision powers are, but he keeps getting hit and blown up and destroyed. So we never got to see a lot of what vision can do. So yeah. it was a miss. It was definitely a miss for me. So ultimately, I will let I've tried to sort of humor as much as I could with the critics. And I only say it seems like they had a dark side plot and a Gordon, a Gordon Godfrey plot. And they kind of chickened out of and doing and total Kirby anti life where they did this wish story. And um, because Gordon Godfrey can in, influence people to do things, so he doesn't that that could have been the whole story right there. And then you get to the bigger story, you can connect to that. Then you go back to your Snyder cut and dark side, and you're like, wow, everything connects, it makes sense. That's what, but that's it. That's why I think it didn't work out. It wasn't done that way because of the Snyder cut. Probably the Snyder Cut got dibs on Dark Side, you know. They, yeah. They're very, very judicious on how they're going to use Dark Side, you know. So I, I don't. Yeah. Know. I, again, I don't think. Again, overall, it's a B. It's not a. It's not a. Uh, it's not a horrible movie. I think you're going to enjoy yourself. There are definitely fun elements in the in the movie that you're going to watch. Um, if you're coming in to find out that it's going to follow the comics, it's not. I mean, I think you should just do the Perez run, and that's it. To me, that's the seminal run of Wonder Woman, period. You know, you do that, the whole War of the Gods, oh, you can't go wrong with, 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 with the Perez run. And that's well, why- Well, the hard part, they can't do it because they made, because Perez run follows what, you know, Prometheus, the god who basically, you know, created man from, you know, from clay. So they're like, oh, and everyone goes, that's ridiculous with the clay part with Wonder Woman. It's like, no, this is the Greek, thing of creation so it's like instead of going away from it saying what Perez did is saying I'm sticking with it so you get to the point with the challenge of the gods where Zeus has overstepped his boundaries and decided to have sex with the um, mortals and or uh, could be Amazons you have this thing where Zeus is like I am you know here for you and then in uh, Hippolyta and one of like one of the best is that Hippolyta is like, what happened? Oh no, not again. And it goes with the history, but that's probably too heavy. People going to what they go to with, with Steve Trevor and Wonder Woman, they're going to flip out. They would flip out if Zeus did that, even though it's work is within his character. You know, within, his, within within the mythology that's written about Zeus. I mean, the dude was sleeping with anything left, right, and and, and stuff. Sometimes he would they were willingly, and many times they weren't. So, you know. We we have to put it in the context of that. He's a he's a slob. He's a he's a, he's a womanizer and stuff like that. And this is what they thought the Greeks back then that a god like Zeus, you know, he was going to take advantage of what he could take advantage because he was a man and he wasn't satisfied with just his wife. And you know there were consequences to it because we see that when he had Hercules, his wife was not rocking with that stuff. You know what I'm trying to say? So it's and he was not just the only one. We see it also in some other movies where, and if you look at that 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 Amazon show, um, uh, Fudge, the Amazon, I think Clash of the Gods, um, where you have um, Zeus has another child out of wedlock, I mean out of another child, and his wife Hera is not flying with that. She basically splits the gods, and there's a whole war on, uh, and the, the, this is a complete mess. This, this is Zeus, you know. But yeah, you know, just getting back to it, I think that. If we're gonna do Wonder Woman, if you put a title and if this is supposed to be a trilogy, these are three independent movies that she's gonna have because she's having a third movie. God knows when that's gonna come out because she's doing Cleopatra with um, Gal Gadot, who's gonna be Cleopatra. And that's causing controversy. And she's going to do, um, um, she's supposed to be working on Rogue Squadron with Star Wars, another thing where Disney's basically saying, hey, we're gonna screw DC. We're gonna have her do this movie for us under contract before she does another Wonder Woman film. So it's, uh, it, it's it, Disney is always two steps ahead of everybody, but um, so we don't know when no, the third movie is going to come out, even though it's been greenlit to, to to become out as soon as possible. But if you if you're going to set up something, you got to go through with it. And audience expectations. I know you keep saying audience are smarter. I'm not. I'm not dissing audience. 
I just think audience, it's like, it's, 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 it's advertising. You know, you got to hit them and 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 hit them again and stick to it. That is, uh, that is the, what do they say? He said, these guys are cretins. You got to hit them over the head. <laughs> and that's what I don't want to get to. And I want to, I want the audience to be able to not just accept, you know, like need, like if you have the red letter media guys talking about needing some action, it's really the hardest thing for me to accept. But um, with that said, to, if you want to do Cheetah, you just have to, um, where is this? You have to do this thing where you have a, you could do the quest, you could have done this, but Perez had a storyline which would be, where is this thing? Let's go back, I'm trying to find it. But you basically did Cheetah in the Amazon jungle but Wonder Woman finds uh, a group of Amazons in the actual Amazon. So it was a, you know, it's a definite strong story where you have Wonder Woman out there and you have Cheetah and then you have these other Amazons. That would have been a, probably a way to go if you want to use a Perez story. That, and then you could try to tie in the challenge of the gods saying, here's what happened. You can put her in this armor and whatnot. And, um, you know, maybe that would have been a way to go to really make Cheetah like the big villain of the story. But it's, um, I'm trying to get a good cover of it. I think this next one is it. Yes. Okay. I think there's a good cover uh, in um, Wiki, I think it is. Yeah, hold on. I mean, I mean, we have the classic cover by that, but I just want to do the, having the jungle scene and um, where is this thing? Okay, sorry for the delay on that. But yeah, if you look at this one, so sort of having this them in the Amazon fighting with meeting the Amazons, the loss, um, Girdle of Gaia, that sort of thing. Yeah, all that stuff that Perez did with, um, you know, Marinin and um, Bly Blyberg. So it's like you had this story, you could have done something with that. I think because Perez's first story is with uh, Cheetah is kind of more like, Hey, Cheetah's this, um, you know, Cheetah's has the girdle. So it connects that girdle thing, that sort of stuff. So, I mean, that's, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've done enough. I've said as much as I think I want to say, but um, I think that there was some things that were changed to get to this point because everyone keeps going Trump and I don't see Trump. I see Gordon Godfrey, which was the legend storyline and legend with a lot of uh, unrest over the world over superheroes but there's no superheroes in 1984 so they did a lot of changes so uphill battle but i think ultimately it was enjoyable um i might check it out again hopefully it doesn't you know like whereas superman 2 for me is a lot of buyer's remorse it doesn't work it's not as strong but um you know Ultimately, I like that the people, I think if we lose this, this is a, a testament of superhero movies. They're going into it and like it's what Martin Scorsese said, like it's a, a ride. Like you go through these things and you need all of the moments. You don't need story. You don't need, you don't want, you. where's the next action scene? If you're doing stuff with, you know, you're doing like a Ling Wen Hulk where the Hulk goes into a town and there's a blind woman and at the end, she's able to see, but she's not able to see that. So she doesn't see the Hulk for how he really looks. And that kind of breaks the Hulk down, like stuff where you do real story stuff in there. Will the audience accept it? Let me ask you that. When you do the stuff that, I think Byrne is getting on hot coal because he's done a lot of human stuff in his, um, his, his um, fiction. Do you think the audiences for their superhero movie want these human moments in there or do they want just more action? I can only say one thing. Look at Endgame. You know, there were serious ish, there were serious um, um, human moments in those, you know, with the loss of characters, you know, um, I, I, of course they do. You know, they want to feel, but they want to feel part of the whole world. They want to feel, you know, that the, the, in this. There's a cheating Endgame. There's a cheating Endgame huh? that they put them they put Tony Stark, we don't see him, you know, they get married. We get to see them right at the point where we need to see them. The story isn't about him and oh, but, his daughter. 
but it's not just him. There are other moments. Black Widow, you know, you Black have... Are you talking about like the time travel stuff? I'm talking about the death. I'm talking about their death. You know what I'm trying to say? The death of what's name. I would say the, the human moments is Tony Stark talking to his father. But what happens when you get away from that? And you no, but for, you, for you, that's it. But I think a lot of people like the, the, the Black Widow thing. You go on YouTube and there's a whole bunch of videos and comments about that. You go um, the whole thing with Tony dying. You hold with, with, the, with the, you know, the whole thing with um, Captain America not coming back. You know, there's a loss. There's a connection. There's a feeling of people and uh, not being around anymore. And I mean, let's not forget Civil War. I mean, not Civil War. Infinity War, the same thing when they all disappeared. People want to see those type of things, but it has to be in the context of the superhero world. It can't just be like, let me throw a lasso on you and you know that changes everything. There has to be, I don't like the fact that the consequences that occur don't change. I don't like that. I think the world needs to revert back to it, like a clean slate. Because if it is, there's some things that are gonna happen. But in, in our last review, I, I, I complained about that. Like she is the only one that didn't get, of seven, five billion people in the world, she's the only one who, who didn't renounce her gift. So what you're trying to tell me, she's like 0. 0.1, 0. 0.01 billion <laughs> who didn't? So, most, most of the people renounced their gift, gift in them, enough to change some of it back. The, the wall in the Egypt, all that stuff. Some of that stuff got reverted back. Right, but I'm saying, think about it. If 10%, 10% is 500 million, 1% is 50 million. If 0.01% is 5 million, 0.001% is um, 500,000, 0.01% is, I'm just saying- Only, only one the people in government who were at the button, the president who rightfully had to, um, the people across around in, in Russia who have uh, the button on the other side, all we need those and the guy who obviously struggled when he gave up, he lost his people and that sort of thing. And he was worried about dying. He, these, those are the people we need to renounce their grift. The, the people that's in, in the enough people where the unrest stopped, right? That's what we need to happen. Okay. No, no, I, I still don't rock with that, but that's it though. Okay. No, no, I refute, now we had serious disagreements with the, um, with the red re red media red letter media review, right? Yes. So, and some of these are all our comments about those. Is there anything else you wish to add? That's it. I just wanted to really get to the Gordon Godfrey thing because I think it's what was um, people aren't seeing when they look at this. They look, oh, this is just a stock sort of thing, and I think they kind of just hedge their bets. I think they came up with something different with that, but I mean, I, if you've already seen Aladdin. And you already can tell that uh, you like what happened in Aladdin with the wishing, wishing in comparison to Wonder Woman, then this uphill battle already. So, yeah. But again, I did like Wonder Woman. It's enjoyable. Am I gonna? It's not going to be one of my top films of the year. It wasn't, and it's it's a decent film. You have a good time and stuff like that. I like I said, I just wish they had done some better choices. Um, different yeah. choices. I'll say better, but different choices. And this, you know, this is our Wonder Woman. Careful what you wish for review. And um, this will hopefully be our last one, our last thing to say about this yes. for now, until the controversy comes back up and they find a, have a problem with the, the guy with the wacky outfit again. So, <laughs> Spinarak out.